you are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with a bassist from New Jersey, Luigi Sardi. Hey. hey. <laughs> How you doing, How's Luigi? Luigi is the bassist for The Scholars. And yeah. we're going to be talking a little bit about his involvement with the band. But to begin with, as we always like to do, tell us a little bit about your bass journey, Luigi. How did you get started? Uh, it was a, a, a fun story. It's, uh, I, I came to the States maybe uh, 10 years ago, I think, 2008. And all I was doing was just like working and working and working. Uh, I, I got here when I was uh, uh, 18. Mm -hmm. um, so I just got out from this band in, in Peru and I'm from Peru and, mm -hmm. and I just got out from, I was singing in this uh, uh, fun punk band, like just like shouting and, and, and it was just fun, but I never touched an instrument. I, I, ne I never knew how to, I always wanted to play guitar, I always wanted to play drums, everything. But um, once I got here to the States and uh, went to actually Florida, um, I saw this bass on eBay and, and it was a pink bass, it was a pink Fender and I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get it. I, I'm just, you know, I, I got time, like all, all I'm doing is I'm just working and, and, and so my free time, I just wanted to learn and, you know, play music and um, I was just like going at it every day and just like trying to figure out how to do this, how my friends used to you know, play and like my favorite bands in Peru. And, mm -hmm. and, and so little by little I started, you know, I, I, I taught myself basically that just watching videos and people talking about it. Um, obviously listening to my favorite bands and, and yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that's how I started. Well, and it's, it's interesting because for a lot of people here in the United States, um, music, is uh, it's a universal language, and I think that they don't really realize how much influence music has had all around the world, especially like American music and rock music in Latin American music. Mm -hmm. And so that we had, I, I lived for a long time in Puerto Rico, and we had people that were very much uh, interested in the kind of the local music and they would call it the musica hiwara and it would be the, yeah. the, the more traditional instruments and afro antillian percussion and things like that and then you had the salseros which of course blends in all of the afro antillian elements and you know it's it's kind of predominant there in the caribbean and then you had the roqueros which were 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 very they're frowned upon very much by a lot of people because they they were like forget all the traditional stuff we want yeah. we want punk music we want the rock music you know we want to listen to the Ramones we want to listen yeah. to and there was this wild flow of concerts that would play in in Puerto Rico uh, American bands that would come you know like Rat or Poison and all of these and the rockeros would you know fill these 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 things up you know and it it has an influence the world around and uh, i've i've listened to quite a few uh, brazilian rock bands and they'll okay. they'll sing in english because it's like the language that's made for for metal and for rock yeah we have some of those yeah <laughs> is, is 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 english even though they are from yeah brazil or from peru or whatever so it, it's kind of an interesting cultural blend. And what we were seeing in Puerto Rico is there was a group of people that were trying to hold on to the traditional portions, mm -hmm. which I guess is why you don't play a charango instead of starting out play, <laughs> playing right. the bass. Right. Or, because, you know, it, it's like, okay, it, it's an evolution. You took up the bass. When did you join uh, the Scholars? The scholars I joined um, about a year and a half ago. I lived uh, just maybe a few blocks away from Jack's house. Mm -hmm. I was with another band. Um, it was a it was a, a punk band, um, and it, mm, 
years ago, when I first moved to New Jersey, I met this guy, Gabe, um, a good friend of mine. Uh, he, he, he's actually our ex-drummer for the scholars, but the story starts, uh, so we met, we played music uh, with this, this other guy, I'm talking about like maybe six years ago, okay. and uh, that band, you know, he, he was young, I was young too, uh, high school was on the way for him, and my job was on, you know, on the way, so it never worked out, and six years after, he's uh, calling me up and saying, uh, hey, are you still playing bass? And like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm still, you know, playing, and, and then he said, listen, uh, you know, uh, the, the scholars is looking for a for a bass player, and and um, you know you, you're gonna like you're gonna like Jack, and 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 we already have a bond. So what do you think? And I go, all right, let's let's try it out. And so I I, I went over uh, um, the, the studio, and, and yeah, that's we clicked. And the music that you guys play, it's it's rock, mm -hmm. but yeah. if if I remember correctly, I was seeing that there's it, there was mention of kind of some blues. And yeah. kind of a rockabilly feel. How would you describe the rock? And, and ro it's tricky with rock because uh, there's there's a lot of sub uh, divisions in rock. So you'll have people that go, "Well, we're prog rock," or you know, it's we're, we're southern rock, or we're yeah. uh, heavy metal, whatever. How how do you describe the music that the Scholars is playing? It's very very influenced, you know, by by the by blues and and and. And like you said, rockabilly, and and there's it's a it's a mix because uh, okay. all the three of us, even when with our new drummer, with we, we, uh, Robbie, we just got a new um, a new drummer. Uh, the three of us is just it's different influences, and it's like that you know Jack, you got Jack with the blues, uh, you got my my punk grunge, however you want to call it, Psy, and then mm -hmm. the drummer, you know, he comes from like a, a, a pop rock world. And then when when we're together, ah, it, it's definitely blue, blues influence, but it's it's like we just modernize it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, and I guess the attitude that we put in it, it, it just makes it, you know, like just... Just rock. <laughs> gotcha. You guys have a debut EP coming out, Meet the Scholars. We recorded uh, Meet the Scholars in, uh, uh, in Studio G um, in Brooklyn uh, with Joe Hamilton. It, it, was, it was great. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was a good, good, good time. Good time uh, recording with, with Joe. Yeah. Um, I would imagine with the new EP that you guys are planning on touring? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna well, right now. New Jersey's so cold, no one wants to get out. <laughs> so uh, we're planning a, a big. You know, we just got a new drummer. Uh, we're already uh, the manager is the one taking care of the. You know, all the gigging uh, ideas like where to play and stuff. So he's. We're thinking in the summer, mm -hmm. a big, big, just go at it, a good tour on the East Coast and, and go all the way down. This is my mom, maybe Florida, maybe she can come to the show. <laughs> and, and yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like with the way the weather is, and of course, as we're talking, you guys are in like record-breaking lows, uh, <laughs> planning a tour of Florida or the Caribbean or somewhere would be a great, sounds like a I great know. idea. <laughs> no. Finding your voice with with your instrument what kind of what gear are you using to get your sound i was always in love i'm, I'm still in love with with the the precision bass with fender the, mm -hmm. the p basses um i used to have a jazz bass after the pink p bass that i the, my first bass that i had it's it's i couldn't you know the, the jazz uh sound I, I couldn't uh i use a pick actually so i forgot to tell you i i do use a pick um I don't know if that's a surprise, but I know a lot of bass players don't use a pick. <laughs> I use one. <laughs> um, with the P bass, it, it was just, it, it was right. Yeah. I, amp amplifiers, I, I used uh, an orange head. I always use an orange head and Ampeg as a cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a, a 4x10 um, Ampeg bass cap. And the orange is the uh, Terror bass head. Mm -hmm. uh, 500 watts, enough power, you know, 
and I do have uh, a, a backup bass, which I love. It's a Gibson Reaper. Mm-hmm. It's a 77. That bass actually back there, it's a, it's a my favorite one. That's that's the P bass that I'm talking about, the Fender P bass 1979. The sound just it kills it. it. I love it. I'm trying to break it, and still it's, it's unbreakable. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh. Maybe one day I'll just, just go at it. Yeah, don't don't try too hard. Those those no, are vintage. I'm not gonna try too hard. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean pedals. I use pedals for for my sound as well. Yeah. I, I think I never used to use pedals. Once I started experimenting with pedals, it it, it it changed the way I I looked at, at you know at, at, I guess the sound of bass or um, I love distortion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't like to crank it too much. It's uh, I, for distortion. I use um, just a bass overdrive, like Microtubes uh, B3K. It just adds. It, it's very punchy when 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 I turn it on, and and just the fuzzy. You know, you control the fuzz, and, and it, it's great. I just. I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I, I, whoever makes the pedals, like it's it's just. Uh, I, I don't know how they get the sounds. I don't even know how the sounds get out of that tiny box. And then I add uh, chorus, a super chorus, um, you know, the classic up, uh, I use the boss, uh, super chorus, uh, um, CH1. I use the chorus just to add warmth to the to the sound. Uh, uh, I use it in three songs, actually, uh, live. That's pretty much it, easy. It's interesting because on multiple points, uh, when you play with a pick, you're going to find that a lot of bass players will hate you for that. So that's, yeah. but, that, but that's okay because everybody <laughs> has to have the way they find their sound. Right. And yeah. with pedals, a lot of it really hinges on the kind of music you're playing and how it blends in. And especially yeah. when you're playing with a trio, uh, because it's a guitarist drums and you. Yeah. A lot of your sound has to kind of fill the space a lot. You know, it has to do uh, a different job. Whereas if you had, you know, four other musicians there, you might be able to just dedicate, you know, doing the groove or laying it down. But you've got to fill a lot of that room. And so I, I find, especially with rock trios or power trios, that the pedals give them a dimension that they're looking for to help get that particular sound and so that comes in handy do you have a preference in strings both of my bases they have uh, ghs uh, uh boomers yeah excellent love them i love the little red thing uh, it's, it's i don't it's great <laughs> i love it <laughs> it gives it a good uh, look i caught a couple of videos peace with you and pressure face and definitely noticed in peace with you uh the very bass heavy foundation that there's a lot of of you showing there on that mm-hmm. are you guys planning to do some more videos in the future yeah yeah definitely we are actually going to do a video um this weekend i think it is uh i think on saturday mm-hmm. uh we're gonna record for um for peace with you yeah for that one yeah <laughs> actually you know i mean the plans uh, I, I stay stay away from the the business side it's always you know the the the, the Woodman, we call it Woodman, our manager. Uh, yeah. He's the one that always like just sends, you know, sends the tags or get us to get us together. Hey, what do you guys think about this? And you know, he gets he brings the ideas, we we fulfill it, and 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 we just make it happen. But yeah, this weekend we're gonna work for a uh, for a new video, Peace with You. Yeah. Nice. If people want to find out more about the EP or the tour or videos. Um, the link I have is thescholars.com. Is that the best yeah. place for people to look? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thescholars.com. We got uh, Instagram, which will be at the underscore scholars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook would be the scholars. And I think we added a band, the, sco- the scholars band, at the scholars band. Mm-hmm. And, well, Instagram and Twitter is the same stuff. So uh, at the underscore scholars. Well, Luigi, it's a great pleasure to talk to a bassist, and you've got you know this upcoming, lots of exciting things going on, big things in the future. So definitely we will look forward to staying in touch and yeah. hearing more about what the Scholars is doing and maybe even see you guys when you're touring the, the Northwest. That's the end of oh, the country yeah. that we're in. <laughs> and it's a I little... 
a little warmer right now, even though it is winter, but still it's not <laughs> as cold as, as you are. So folks, you've ha you've seen it here. Luigi Sardi, bassist for the Scholars, coming to you live on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.